Hey you, using that DDR3 or DDR4, maybe even DDR2 if you're into a bit of LGA775. It's all system memory and nowadays it's actually quite expensive, but there is DDR5 on the horizon and should you need to upgrade to it? Let's do a little bit of analysis and focus on the topic. Today's video is brought to you by ASRock with their H370 performance motherboards. If you're in the market for an 8th gen Intel CPU, even an i7, this board has you covered with a 10 phase VRM design. You can even control things like RGB fans and other components via the Polychrome RGB software, which you can use in both the BIOS and Windows. Click on the link in the description below to learn more. So before looking at the future of computer memory, we have to evaluate what we have right now. If you're buying a computer in 2018 or even a new smartphone, it's most likely running DDR4. You may stop me and say, that's because DDR4 is the fastest. Look, I can pick up a stick of DDR4 with 3200 megahertz XMPs, but there's more to the story than just memory clock speeds. The biggest resistance to clock speed is latency, but we need to start with latency. We mainly need latency because the CPU and memory don't run at the same frequency. So there's an element there where the system is waiting for the memory because the CPU is faster most of the time. But what about when it isn't? What if we happen to have, for example, 3200 MHz DDR4 memory on a 3200 MHz CPU? Zero latency, you might ask? Nope because the motherboard is now your bottleneck. So true low ultra low latency memory, is it even possible? Well, no, they even did it on really old Intel CPUs such as the original 8086, which runs at eight megahertz on a three micrometer architecture. That's 3000 nanometers. That was the last time the memory processor and bus ran at the same frequencies. But even the 8086 needed latency so that the data could physically move between two components. Otherwise, by the time the electric current reached the CPU, it would have started a new cycle, resulting in essentially a short circuit. Lots of talky talk. What does that mean for you? DDR5 was initially rumored to be released in 2020, but news of the standard being finalized in 2018 and released in 2019 have come to fruition. Here's some things you can do now to get the most out of your system, however. Well, as long as you have dual channel and some systems even have quad channel memory, you are using the most bandwidth possible for your CPU. You could also try overclocking your B clock instead of your CPU ratio. But with DDR5, hopefully we'll be able to sync up those clocks once again, then it's just a matter of waiting for motherboard chipsets to improve enough to reach an equilibrium before CPUs get higher clocks once again. Ideally, games will start utilizing more cores, so we don't need to hit such high frequencies so we can focus on trying to cut down on latency because the DDR5 spec proposed is aiming for 4400 megahertz to 6400 megahertz with latencies of CL42 to 48. To put that into perspective, most DDR4 runs at CL15 out of the box, 2133 megahertz, and DDR3 runs at CL11, 1600 megahertz. Well, at least most of it does now. So comparing latency across different DDR architectures is factually inaccurate since memory goes by cycles and the lower the better. However, the higher the polling rate, the better from the speed itself means we are looking at DDR4 having a comparable latency of which tend to keep speed differences between the two marginal. For example, when comparing DDR3 to DDR4, we have 0.006875 latency per pole for DDR3. With DDR4, we have 0.0070334 for DDR4. And for DDR4, we have calculated roughly 0.00703234. And the guesstimate for DDR5 would be somewhere around 0.009545. So as bandwidth improves, the latency increases. Some may say this is a bad thing. I would say it's both a good and bad thing. A necessary evil, rather. DDR5, of course, will have its other benefits and it will run at lower voltages. 1.1 volt is the predicted spec. This will mean lower power consumption and less heat output. A great bonus for large corporations with server farms, like Google, for example, running X amount of servers in their headquarters. The one it all draws back to the single end desktop user, which is me and most likely a lot of you guys out there, the differences are negligible for the end user. Only an extra few watts extra power consumption and as shown by many different benchmarks and games, DDR4 already doesn't make that much of a difference compared to DDR3. And in fact, some games generally appreciate lower latencies if anything. 
though Ryzen is an exception to this, preferring both higher transfer speeds and also lower latencies. Call it a unique CPU design to say the least, much because of its infinity fabric. Though truth be told, DDR5 isn't delayed at all and it actually is ahead of schedule. I think with worldwide increased consumer demand for smartphones, tablets, computers, laptops and all things electronics, brings an ever so over amplified demand for this memory. And when DDR3 was released back in 2007, DDR4 came 7 years later in 2014, way back when Intel's 5th generation high-end desktop CPUs and X99 was first released. So for a 2019 slated release, it is actually beating the previous generational gap between DDR3 and DDR4, though admittedly it's losing out to that of the shift from DDR2 to DDR3, which was a 4 year gap when DDR2 was initially released in 2003. So in conclusion, memory is a funny thing, all pun intended. Just like our own memory, the system memory is volatile, it will forget things. Though let's not forget that DDR5 will just be another release in the pipeline, and that will of course come with the new release of CPUs, motherboards, and of course, fancy RGB heat spreaders. The technology itself is predicted to use a 7 nanometer node process, which is a 2.2 times shrink compared to that of DDR4's 16 nanometer when that was first released. It will have the same 288 pins as DDR4 and provide overall transfer speeds faster than its predecessor, though predicted to still lose out slightly when it comes to latency. The first prototypes are already in the testing phase and everything looks to be going as smoothly as planned. Though one thing for sure is, the insatiable demand for things like smartphones has in my opinion sure increased the demand for speeding up the before estimated 2020 release to the now predicted 2019 progression of transitioning from DDR4 to DDR5. With the following graphs showing some crazy stats where in 2012, the total demand for DDR memory was around 20% in smartphones. Fast forward to 2018, that is now up to 45% and predicted to top 50% in the next few years. Quite scary when you think of it, or quite pleasant since you guys might be watching this video on a smartphone. Though speaking of this video, thank you guys greatly for watching it. If you enjoyed it, then be sure to hit that like button and let us know in the comments section below, are you looking forward to DDR5? Me personally, yes, because then we have hopefully more fabs that can produce more system memory and hopefully in turn that can have some kind of economies of scale that can kick in and bring the price down of DDR3 or DDR4 perhaps so we can start getting gaming PCs for cheaper. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below. Love reading those comments as always, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.